It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports, where we'll see a brawl inside the NFC North. It's the Detroit Lions and the Chicago Bears. All that and more coming up next. Now, the good news is that the winds aren't as violent as they were yesterday in Chicago, but it's still pretty darn cold to be expected, I guess, for December football at Soldier Field. Today, we've got what's always a hard-hitting battle in the NFC North, as it'll be the Detroit Lions taking on the Chicago Bears. With my partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. A CD, the Chicago Bears, they come off a tough year at 3-14. and 14. The most losses in franchise history. What can they look to build around here in 2023? Well, it starts with their quarterback, and you know that he is a heck of a player for them. But they've got to get better on the defensive side of the ball. Head coach, defensive background, he's trying to amass that kind of talent and become the monsters of the midway once again. But meanwhile, for the visiting Lions, they're going to be a pretty trendy sleeper pick. I feel obligated contractually to mention that they've only won one playoff game since 1957, and that number gets more and more impossible every year. But finally, Charles Davis, can they break the string in 2023? Break it, snap it, cut it, whatever you want to use. This Lions team, I fully expect to be in the playoffs in 2023. I like the way that they're being built. Here's the punter, Trenton Gill, now to do the honors. And off we go here at Soldier Field. And this taken in at the goal line. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. Well, the Lions offense getting ready to go to work here. And under center, a man whose career has been rejuvenated a bit as of late. And season number eight now out of Cal, it's Jared Goff. And at one point, the ascension of Jared Goff was really, really strong. Back-to-back -back Pro Bowls, took his team to the Super Bowl, and came really within one quarter of winning it. But since that time, he's had bouts of inconsistency, and that's been the struggle for him as he tries to get back to the form he showed earlier in his career. Here's the former Bear. This is David Montgomery. The game's first play produces six yards, brings up second down. If you're in the offensive huddle, you're smiling after that play because you've certainly got them guessing now. Second and short, could they just hand it off for another big game, or did they take advantage of this spot to take a big shot downfield? Here's second and four from the 24. Back to throw, golf. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. And yeah, they'll look to avoid an early three and out here on third and four. Now it's gone. That is caught. And he is going to have the Lions first down. They needed four. He doubled that. He wound up getting eight. And that one was a lot of fun right there because that was the game within the game. Third and short, blitz was on. What's the key for the quarterback? Get out of your hands in a hurry. And that was a quick little completion. Got the job done for a first down. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Montgomery on the counter. And he is going to lose yardage here. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. You know what the converse is, though? You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks. And when you don't, that's the result you end up with. On second down, here's Goff. And that'll be caught. It's St. Brown. And he's got this to the 30 before being taken down. Last play, they didn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. Now they gain all those 40 yards here. Brandon, we've both been around the game long enough that we know that in pregame, defenses are pretty amped up, aren't they? I mean, they're pounding lockers, and they can't wait to get out there. But when you hit them with some big pass plays early, it takes a starch right out of them. So the big play has them all the way down to the 30 now for first and 10. Now gone. Wright's got it. And they'll have it in 
the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. I got a kick out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy... And in for the Lions, touchdown! Sam Laporta, an 18-yard touchdown grab. And the Lions get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. Could not have scripted it any better. And many offenses do script their opening possession on offense. They followed that one perfectly. Took the ball right downfield and scored, giving energy not just to the offensive unit, but to their team overall. Riley Patterson now for the extra point. It's up, it's good, and the Lions lead 7-0. So this drive spans seven plays, and it's capped off by a touchdown for the Lions. Here are the Lions now as they line up and kick this one away. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. So here come the Bears to take over on offense behind their third-year quarterback, former Ohio State Buckeye Charles, Justin Fields. And not only does he have all the skills that you're looking for as a quarterback, he's incredibly tough and plays the game fearlessly is both a runner and a passer. You provide a good running game around him and let him throw deep off a of play action, you've got an all-star in the making. Fields and the Bears now with a first and 10 at the 20. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And his throw is gonna be incomplete. After the incompletion, they'll try once more from the 20-yard line on second and 10. Now it's Fields. And his throw here is incomplete. A couple of quick incompletions, and now they're just one more away from getting off the field. They've got options now. Could they dial up a blitz here or just drop everyone into coverage to crowd the throwing lanes? Now they face a third and 10 after back-to-back -back incompletions. Here's Fields. Well, this is taken in, it's complete. He's to the 15. Touchdown, Chicago! DJ Moore, an 80-yard touchdown. And the Bears are able to strike back quickly with an opening touchdown of their own. They said that they wanted to get him involved early, and what a way to cap their opening drive, Charles. We know he's one of the fastest receivers in the NFL, and he showcased it on that play. And when you have a guy like that, you want to make sure the defense sees him early, right? You want to see how they're going to adjust, how they're going to try and guard him, because they can't replicate his speed in practice unless they've got one of the few guys who are as fast as he is. And all it took was one drive, he burned them. And I don't think it's the last time they called his number in this one. Khalif Raymond from his end zone. 
And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much as he's marked down officially at the 21. Back onto the field come the Lions for their second overall drive. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. They'll start on the ground with Montgomery. And they're going to stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. Out of the gun, golf. That's into the hands of Donovan Peoples-Jones. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. First catch for him. It's good for a dozen and a first down. Someone sharp in this game. I mean, a touchdown pass on the first drive and comes right back, and he's flinging it around really well here. A really nice throw there to pick up the first down. You, you kind of just feel a laser focus and confidence about him, and I think we saw that this week, didn't we? Talking to him and the coaches, they felt good about his performance coming up. Yeah, I was really impressed with that last practice we saw when they went through two-minute drill, when they went through all the different situations. Ball hardly hit the ground, and I thought... Yeah, he might be locked in for this one. We often give credit to the O-line. Their two tight end formation, those tight ends block pretty well also. Yeah, and that's one of the most dynamic positions in football now. The tight ends who can block at the line of scrimmage at the point of attack, and they can also get downfield and catch the football. Goff's throw taken in by Reynolds. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. I know this may be jumping the gun a little bit, but 7-7, seven to seven, they're flinging it around like crazy. Look at the drive that's going on here. Partner, we may have to start thinking about one of these defenses just holding someone to a field goal and maybe trying to get an advantage that way. These two teams all tied after one. The Lions with the football here to begin the second quarter as they've got it with a first and ten. They'll try the middle with Montgomery. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. So from the 25, this is second and five. Off play action. Here's Goff. That is caught by Laporta. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. A good pick up there, 21 yards. Great mix of play calling so far. Three runs, three passes. All three passes have been completions. First and goal. I think on defense now, you have to almost take a chance. Rely on your scouting. Pick a play you think they would run here and just load up for it and see what happens. Montgomery is not going to get a whole lot. Maybe a yard down to the three. Only a yard that time. Second and goal. Looking at this now, you got a couple more cracks here. This close, sneak it. I don't think you even go into a huddle. Just line up, snap it, and fall in behind those guys into the end zone. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. And they'll turn to the power game to try to get in. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Detroit. Jason Cabinda, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Lions have taken the lead. And boy, that was a heavy set. I think they had three tight ends out there. The fullback, they just, you knew what they were going to do. Yeah, they weren't trying to fool anybody at all, were they? There was none of this show you heavy set, bootleg it out. Nah, nah, nah. Big guys up front, hand it to the big guy in the backfield. Extra point by Patterson, up and good. And that makes the score 14 to 7.
Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. And now it looks like he's in some discomfort after being tackled at the end of that return. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. At the line, prepping for their next drive, the Bears offense. After that last score we just saw, now 14-7, so a chance to march down the field here, try to tie this football game. And they work this well right upfield across the 45. An excellent run of 22 yards on the keeper and also a first down. It looked like almost some miscommunication defensively because once he decided to keep it, he had pretty smooth sailing. Yeah, it became a question of, wait a minute, who's got the quarterback? And when you talk about miscommunication, it's supposed to be called assignment football on the defensive side of the ball, but the assignment gets mixed up. That's the end result. Knife's his way forward here, but just three yards on the play, second down. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be. But still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. On second down, here's a keeper by the QB. And well, he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Excellent job on the keeper. 20 yards and a first down. Well, partner, for a few years there, we thought this read option play was going to take over the whole NFL. It seemed like everyone was using it. But it has been scaled back considerably in the last few seasons, mainly because people were worried about their quarterbacks getting hit. But when you call it at the right time and you use it properly, you see the type of gains you can get. A nice chunk of yardage there by the quarterback. On first down, it's Fields. Open man right side is St. Brown. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. He was unable to shake free there. They'll cover him for a loss of a yard. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Here's Fields. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. And this is a quarterback who's already had success on the ground in this first half, but this time they're able to hem him in. And it's always different when you rush a mobile quarterback as opposed to a guy you know will be right back in the pocket. In this case, you got to make sure the inside pressure and the outside pressure match and maybe even a second wave to make sure if he squirts free, you've got someone to tackle. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. So the completion results there in nine yards. And that'll bring up fourth down. One of the money routes for any offense, the drag route. So tough to defend because the receiver can stop at any point and make himself available to the quarterback and get a completion. But I love the communication. And the holder's going to keep it. He's going to try to run for it. The fake field goal catches everyone by surprise. And the Bears are an extra point away from tying the ball game here in the final minute of the first half. And a special play there by the special teams. It's one thing to fake it. He ran it in for the score. I think the special teams coach saw something on film in preparation for this game. Told the head coach, now's the time. He got the green light, and they worked it to perfection. Now the point after try for Santos. Now we've got a good one brewing. We're all knotted up at 14. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And the finishing touch was that nice long run into the end zone.
This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. The Lions now taking over late in this first half. And they've got a little under 40 seconds to go if they want to try to put something together here. Goff on first down. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. Well, once again, they'll go from the 23-yard line on second and 10. Now Goff. That's complete to Peoples-Jones. The Lions will use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. Third and three. in the middle of the field and he's got a man complete. The Lions now going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 27 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. On first and ten, golf. to the left sideline and incomplete. Just nowhere to go with the football. He was forced to put that one into Lake Michigan. I think his receivers have to do a better job of working free because he didn't have anywhere to go at all on that play. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Now a play fake and it's gone. And that's caught inside the 30. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Now a timeout signal for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. On the right hash, it's a 43-yard attempt. Patterson's kick is good, and they take a 17-14 lead. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one-possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks, you tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. Maybe time for one play on offense. Seven seconds to go in the half as the kick is away. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. The Bears take over first and 10 at their own 22-yard line. He'll take the knee in the final couple seconds. will tick by in this first half. So we've hit halftime, just a field goal separating these two teams at the break. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports 
halftime report. This one's been as good as advertised. Just a field goal separating these two teams. This is a very level first half, and I'd expect to see more of the same after the break. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. Field goal, the difference. 17 14 is the score. Back underway here now in this third quarter. Here's Jones to bring it out of the end zone. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. And the Bears' offense set to go to begin the third quarter. Well, Charles, in that first half, we saw a fair amount of offense on both sides of the football. And now the team trailing here will start with it in the third quarter. And we both know this coach pretty darn well, don't we? Because his game planning is always on point. And now that he's getting the ball to start the second half, how about all the offense that you already referenced in the first half? He'll put that all together and come out with something really strong, I believe, to get things going here in the third quarter. Starting on the ground with Herbert. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here. Second down. You've got to be impressed by the defensive front on reps like those. They were not being moved off the line, kept their shoulders square, and gave their teammates time to fight to the ball and limit that gain. Man, I just love being in this stadium. So much history, tradition, so many great teams and games, and we're seeing a pretty good one right now. Hotly contested in the third quarter. Forced out to, and he can't find anywhere to go with it, and he goes down. There's Charles Harris getting home for the sack. I thought there at the end he may have had a chance to release that, but that pocket closed a little too quickly, and down he went. Yeah, he was certainly trying to do everything he could to extend the life of the play, probably counting in his head. One, two, and then he ran out of time. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. And so many times we look at the opening drive of the third quarter as a tone setter, and many coaches do emphasize it, and that's a strong performance there defensively to force the incompletion and, more importantly, force a quick punting situation. Here comes the Bears punter now, and surprisingly, this is the first punt of the game for either team. That's pulled in at the 32. It's a return of five following a punt of 42 yards. And the Lions will take over. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. So good starting field position for him here as they come up first and 10 at their own 37. To Montgomery to begin the drive. On springs free, Montgomery loses it. And this is picked up by the Bears. And they'll set up shot in enemy territory at the 45-yard line. So turnovers, Charles, you figure will be key in the second half, and that's a big giveaway there. Yeah, and as you and I both know, coaches are always preaching ball security, and none more often than right here in the second half of a tight football game. Now you've got to believe what the coaches are saying and take care of that football. The Chicago offense set to get started. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalposts, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to spin together a nice drive and help themselves out. They'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. 
So they'll, of course, decline the pass interference there and wisely take the yardage. And I think defensively he's saying, I was getting away with that in the first half. Why are you making that call now? But to me, that one was pretty easy to see. I don't understand what he's upset about. I think it was the correct call. On first and ten, here's Fields. Now that'll be caught by St. Brown. Touchdown, Bears! Back with him is St. Brown from 21 yards away. And the Bears have taken the lead here in this third quarter. Man, he just ran a terrific route. Extremely hard to defend when it's run that precisely and the ball's delivered that accurately. Santos now to add the PAT. It's up and good to make it 21-17. The long touchdown pass gets him six on a very, very tidy two-play drive that time. Touchdown. Here's the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick it away. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. And Detroit getting set to go now. Charles, you got to think the number one goal here is ball security. Remember, last drive they coughed it up. Then they allowed the touchdown, and now they're trailing on the scoreboard. Boy, the way you described it makes me think that that one actually hurt them three times. The fumble cost them potential points. Then they watched their opponent get a touchdown off of the fumble. And third, they lost the lead as a result. Really tough sequence right there. I don't think coaches have to remind them to hold on to the football. They've just got to find a way to get it done. They'll go with the rookie from Alabama. It's Jameer Gibbs. And this will line up a Lions first down as he's got this up to the 35-yard line. Pardon if you want more carries. I think we saw how you get him. Showed that he's got the fresh legs, and he picked up the first down on that run. Don't just ask for him. Show him that you're supposed to get the football. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. St. Brown motioning left. And they're going to give it to him on the jet sweep. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Tyreek Stevenson on the tackle. A six-yard pickup brings up second and four at the 41-yard line. Goff now to throw. He's got it complete to Gibbs. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears 40. 19 yards the pick up there. Move the chains. Good route. Good pickup for first down yardage. And that is a tough one to cover. The angle route because a running back getting out of the backfield. If you're trying to cover that, especially if you're in the linebacker spot and you're seeing this play develop, he heads out towards the flat first. And that often gets you to overcommit running in that direction. Then he cuts back up inside you into the middle of the field. That's what we just saw there for a nice pickup. Throw left side complete. That's Montgomery. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it can turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. Second down and eight. Goff now looking to throw. That's to the tight end, Laporta. Touchdown, Detroit! Sam Laporta with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Lions have answered back with a third-quarter touchdown of their own to retake the lead. For a big tight end, he can sure move like a slot receiver when he gets a head of steam going. And as a defensive back, you've got a big decision to make when he's moving like that.
Extra point try now for Patterson. And that one gives him a three-point lead. So that drive spanned five plays. And the end result, a Detroit touchdown. Here are the Lions now as they line up and kick this one away. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. D.J. Moore headed back out as the Bears take over on possession. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. Fields and the Bears now with a first and 10 at their own 24. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Got Sonny Brown running the quick slot here. And he gets this one just shy of the 40 to mark him down at the 39. 15 yards is the pickup there, and the drive starting very nicely. First down. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. On first and 10, it's Herbert. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. This is second and eight. Now Field's going to keep it running left. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we played three quarters. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now at Soldier Field. The Bears on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and eight to throw his fields. And this is caught. He hits more. the defensive breakdown to take the lead away here in the fourth. Pretty good response. They had given up the touchdown and the lead, but they struck back. And I love the way that they just saw it happen. Took a quick exhale on the sidelines. So let's go get it back and fast. Let's go ahead and throw the ball downfield and get our own six points. A huge chunk play to regain that lead. Santos able to tack on the extra point, and that will make this a four-point game. Well, after the touchdown, here's the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick it away. Here's Raymond bringing it out. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. And Detroit back in possession of the football. We certainly have a good one on our hands. They're trailing after that last touchdown, but now a chance for this offense to try to snag that lead right back here in the fourth quarter. Off in this Lions offense, set for a first and 10 at their own 16. He'll begin by dropping it off to Montgomery. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, 
you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. Two yards on the pickup, and that's all they needed to move the sticks. Second and one, and people wanted to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there, pick up the first down. Clock running under four to play now as they come up on first and ten. Now it's gone. Oh, that's into a sea of bodies, and it's intercepted. Tyreek Stevenson picks it off, and his guys are going to get the football at the 37-yard line. Well, these defensive coaches, they sure like what they've got in this rookie corner, and with good reason, as you saw there. He only cost him a day-two pick, and a lot of people thought he had first-round ability. But when he was available on draft night, that was one where you didn't need the full time to make the selection. You called that pick in early, and he shows why he was so coveted with that interception there. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Fields now to throw. His throw incomplete. They certainly thought he had an open look beyond the first down marker to his receiver, but they just couldn't connect, and that will send them back to the drawing board. Line of scrimmage, again the 37 as they line up second and 10. Back to throw, Fields. And his throw is incomplete. Well, so far in this drive, they've done some good work. They force incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and ten. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure, or do they play coverage on this down? Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. Now it's Fields. Slide to a stop. He does have the first down. Opted to run for it. The decision of Goodwin picking up the first, getting 14 yards on the scramble. That is an absolute backbreaker. That was a design passing play. Wasn't a draw. You think you got him stopped. Good coverage downfield. And he's able to pick up the first with his legs. Defensively, that kicks into your psyche and hurts a little bit, doesn't it? It certainly does. And, and here's the thing. Anytime you give up a first down, it hurts you psychologically. But it hurts more when they get it this way because you've covered everything. He didn't have any place to throw the football. He takes off running and picks it up anyway. And now you have to stay on the field for an extra set of downs. And really could have used that stop trailing here in the fourth. Well, that's the fear any defense has when the quarterback gets involved in the running game. You don't usually account for him, and he's hurting them today. Yeah, he's been very involved in the running game. Defensively, when you've got the coverage good downfield, how do you account for him, though? Occasionally, you start to spy him. Take someone out to see. And he can't find Receiver, and he's brought down. Flying in for that sack, Aiden Hutchinson. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So the Bears with the football here as we welcome you back. So following the sack, they'll try to change their fortune here on second and 13. Herbert powering up the middle. And just shedding him off there. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. Now this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Field's going to hold on to it. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Bears. Justin Fields scoring on the two-yard keeper. And the Bears are able to build on to their fourth quarter lead. What a huge touchdown that was, obviously, here in the late stages of the fourth quarter as they try to put this one away. And, Brandon, when they watch the film after this week, they'll be very proud of every rep if they close this game out. Just a few snaps remaining. They can't relax just yet. Santos with the extra point, and that pushes the lead up to 11. Well, 
After the touchdown, here's the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick it away. Well, now how about this return? He's to midfield. Khalif Raymond. And he will score. Touchdown, Lions. Okay, game on. Don't go anywhere yet. you got a one-score game now. Probably going to rely on the onside kick coming up. Yeah, they have to. It's not a high percentage play, but it's better than not having a chance at all. And that's when you put your leapers and your flyers on one side, get that high hop, and hope that one of the guys can come up with it. And on the other side, get that hands team ready. No doubt about it. So certainly some importance to this one now. After the touchdown, they could get this down to a field goal with a two-point conversion. Goff. And this is caught. They got it. And that could be an important two points. It gets them back within a field goal. So the deficit now three after the huge conversion, but they need to get the football back. So this is where special teams really comes into play because getting the ball back, it starts with this next kickoff. How do they get downfield? Either jar it loose or get the ball back themselves. That's going to be key for them. So they got their touchdown, now down a field goal. Here comes the onside kick. And the Bears' hands team able to pounce on it and get the football. And now looking at the clock here, they do have two timeouts, but even if they force a three and out, they're going to have very little time remaining. So that means they've got to be aggressive and find a way to knock the ball free. They've got to come up with it because they can't just rely, as you noted, on using their timeouts and getting the ball back, they might not have any time to mount an attack, even if they do play it that way. Get the football. That's their mantra. Two hands on the football here as they run on first down. And hit behind the line. He lost the football. It's loose. But fortunately, another offensive player quick to react, and they will indeed retain possession. And I believe the referee's been buzzed. Yeah, they want to take another look at this call, and it's certainly a big one here late in a tight game. Now the question, was the knee in fact down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need good possession of football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. After review of the play, ruling on the field is reversed. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. Another running situation on the doorstep as they come up second and ten. A give left side here for Herbert. And he's going to be met at about the 43. And the Lions quickly now going to use the last of their timeouts as they'll get it with just over 90 seconds to go in the ball game. And they'll need to get to the 35 if they want to keep this drive going on third down. Back to throw. Fields. And he's caught. And they wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. Quarterbacks love slam runs because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision. And receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get on field and gain additional yardage.
The win for the Bears just around the corner. They go down to a knee. Fields down to a knee here, and that should just about put a bow on this one. That was an excellent come from behind victory, Charles, especially there in the fourth quarter. Both offense and defense were clicking. They're going to feel good about this one. Boy, are they ever, because the deficit they faced certainly wasn't small. They obviously did not give up on that one, and in the end, how about that come from behind victory? They'll cherish this one for a while. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaunt. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports.